looks like it is going. Okay, so welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. Uh, Pamela Noble has been with the Kansas Children's Service League for over 10 years and she coordinates the Governor's Conference for the Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect and the Child Abuse Prevention Month statewide campaign as well as supervises Parent Education and Crisis Nursery. So today she's going to be discussing the Child Abuse Prevention Month campaign and the toolkit that KCSL has created to help partners in their awareness efforts in their own communities. And so at this time, Pam, I am switching the screen to you and so we should hopefully be able to see your screen at this point. Okay. And we Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Welcome everyone to our Child Abuse Prevention Month webinar. Just a reminder that this webinar is kind of the how-to for Child Abuse Prevention Month. It's not a mandated reporter webinar. Rochelle will do one of those in April, I believe. So we are looking forward to a great campaign for the month of April. We are actually celebrating 42 years this year of Child Abuse Prevention Month and Prevent Child Abuse Kansas. Kansas was the first state to have its own chapter and that started 42 years ago. Um, just a little bit of history. Originally, Child Abuse Prevention was a week in June and then in 1983, President Reagan deemed April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. So it's the 40, like I said before, it's the 42nd anniversary of Prevent Child Abuse Kansas. And it's also the 42nd anniversary of the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, which is where a lot of the money comes from that funds a lot of different prevention programs. It's federal flow through money. Sue Ellen Freed was one of our, was one of the founders with Helen Swan and Joe Perrin. They founded the Kansas Committee for the Prevention of Child Abuse. Sue Ellen is still very active. She's in her 80s. She does bullying prevention. She still works in the realm of child abuse prevention, and she also has a prison outreach program. The Committee for Child Abuse Prevention became part of Kansas Children's Service League in 1993. And in the role as the state chapter, we provide training and technical assistance for the Child Abuse Prevention Month campaigns. We know that some agencies don't necessarily have the marketing or the social media people that can be assigned to certain campaigns. And so we try to provide that information for you to make it a little bit easier to reach your corner of the state. So I thought we'd review a little bit about 2017. We had activities reported in 29 different communities. There were 143 letters to the editor that were sent out and there were 35 proclamation signings at the county and city level. And we will get to more detail on how to do those as we proceed through the webinar. Just some different photos from 2017. Photos really tell the story and we love it when you have an event in your community and you're able to send us photos. These are of the Department for Children and Families event that was held at Wesley Children's Hospital. The Attorney General came as well as um, one of our local legislators and then just some other people from DCF, KCSL, Head Start. We had Head Start children that planted the pinwheels out in front of the Children's Hospital. The Children's Hospital was new last year, so it was kind of a nice kickoff for them as well. We also had pinwheels that were planted at the Capitol. And while we have in the past planted pinwheels at the Capitol, last year was the first year that we've been able to plant them and leave them on display. So that was kind of fun. They were there for the end of, I think they were there when the, right before legislators left in March and then for a couple of weeks. So we had a young woman from one of the local high schools that, that did quite a bit of the planting. And then we had some of the other legislators as well that came out to do some planting and to be supportive of prevention programs. 
If you are looking, if you need to find your legislator, it's very easy to do. You can go to openstates.org or even just Google, how do I find my state legislator in Kansas? Or you can call or email me and I can give you some more instruction. And um, we really try to encourage you to invite your legislators while they're home in April to whatever you have going on. Maybe it's just a site visit. Maybe you have a specific event. Maybe you have some family time going on. We really encourage that you invite them and have them come out and see your programs in action because really that speaks more than anything else. And most legislators really like to come when they're home, they like to come into the communities and get to know their constituents and see what is happening. Some of our 2018 goals, we want to have events in 25 different counties around the state during April. We also try to have additional events throughout the year. So if you have something planned that's family related, family focused, family strengthening, and it's not happening in April, you're free to still use the pinwheels, to use the bookmarks, to use the materials that we have available. We do just ask that you let us know so we can report on it. And also, so um, if you have pictures, we'd love to have pictures. 125 letters to the editor, 30 proclamation signings, and then again, just that ongoing campaign stressing the importance of prevention. Child abuse prevention doesn't go away because April goes away. It's really a year round campaign. We just try to draw a little more emphasis to it in April. So some of our campaign components, we do have a toolkit that's available on our website that includes letters to the editor, includes sample proclamations, talking points, social media information. These are all in a PDF format. So when you get them, if you would like to do a proclamation at your city or your county and you don't wanna to have to retype what's in the PDF, if you let me know, I can send you a Word document of that so you don't have to spend your time retyping. Pinwheels are available for a dollar each. There's bulk pricing for orders over 50, or excuse me, over 500 and 1,000. The pinwheel lapel pins are available for 258 each. And then also we have pinwheel coloring sheets and we have some paper pinwheels that you can cut out and use to hang on windows of your school, of whatever um, business may be in your community. Sometimes people in um, some of our other communities, some of our partners, can have, we'll have a business that will sponsor, do you want to buy a paper pin mill for a dollar and that dollar is donated to whatever organization in the community has, um, you know, is fortunate enough to have made that connection. We encourage that. We have used them just in our office. We cut them out um, when we do a wear blue day or a luncheon and we hang them up on our office windows with the names of our kids our personal kids, and sometimes um, maybe just first names of kids that have been influenced through our programs. It's important to remember that the pinwheel is kind of the new frame for the Child Abuse Prevention Month symbol. It is used in support of healthy child development, of babies born, of families served, we don't ever um, equate, the, equate the pinwheel with reported cases or fatalities or children that are up for adoption or children that have been adopted. We really try to stick with that prevention framework. Sometimes we do a pinwheel bouquet of just five pinwheels in a vase, which stands um, for the five protective factors. So those are some good options. A, a vase of pinwheels in your entryway of your office with a poster that, or a printout that talks about the five protective factors is a great conversation starter. It lets people know that you really are there to serve and strengthen families. The past few years, we have done what we call an anniversary kit. We started it with our 40th anniversary and we've just continued it. It's been fairly popular. 
So it's 40 pinwheels, uh, a, a yard sign, bookmarks. Um, we have some, pin, uh, excuse me, we have some tattoos and some stickers. It's magnets. So those are still available for $40 and you can order those off of the um, Community Resource Library order form. And then these are the paper pinwheels that I was referring to. There's one that says healthy children. There's one that says happy children. You can you print them two to a sheet and then you do have to cut them out. Although that makes a great project if you have high school students, maybe over spring break that need National Honor Society volunteer hours or something like that. That's a pretty easy project for them to do. Some of the pinwheel plantings from last year Hope Unlimited did this, and some of these I know for sure what they are, and some of them I just got like a photo from Hope Unlimited. They did some kind of a pinwheel planting in a in a garden area. Um, Casa did pinwheel plantings and proclamation signings. Casa has been a great partner over the past couple of years. They've reached a lot of counties where we don't have offices and and they've done the pinwheel plantings, they've done the proclamation signings, and they have worked with the judicial branch to kind of bring some awareness to prevention and children. Uh, Rochelle took this picture last year of the orange tulips and the blue pinwheels, and I put it in because I thought it was really pretty. The past three years we've uh, had a great partnership with um, Starbucks and they have bought a hundred pinwheels and planted them in front of their store for the Starbucks in Wichita, Hutchinson, line at the standalone stores. This year corporate has decided sadly not to do that. So I would encourage you that if you live in a community where there's a Starbucks and you frequent them at all to go in and maybe have a conversation with the store manager and see if maybe that store is just interested in doing it even on a smaller level. And really that is true for any businesses you have in your communities. Um, Freddy's, the corporate office for Freddy's here, did pinner. We have had some that we've planted in various other parts around the places around the city and it's a great partnership if you have a locally owned coffee shop, restaurant, or something like that in your community, you might think about approaching them as well. Proclamations are a really easy way to bring awareness to April and to the programs that you all manage. We'll do a state level proclamation. DCF usually sets that up with the governor's office. And then we do city and county. In some places I know that kind of the city and county are combined. And that's great as well. But proclamations are really easy. Usually sometimes if you look on your city website, there'll be a specific form that you need to fill out. Um, sometimes you just have to send an email to whoever is in charge administratively of the mayor or the city council and say, hey, I'm interested in having a proclamation signed for April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. This is where I work. This is what we do. This is how we prevent child abuse. And then you, you usually do it in a public ceremony. So right before a city council meeting and you get to attend and they read the proclamation and sign it and lots of times you have the opportunity to speak a little bit to add some um, words of wisdom so to speak about the programs that you serve and the or the programs that you work in and the families that you serve this is really important for our local government officials to understand what we do why we do it and the populations that we serve some of the things that are easy to hand out to them that are educational are the bookmarks that we have. They have the protective factors on them. Those are a very easy thing to hand out and to say, you know, we strive to raise protective factors in families because we know that as we raise those protective factors, we're lessening the risk factors. 
So city and county, it's a great thing to do. If you have questions, please let me know. And again, there is a proclamation on our website in the toolkit. All you have to do is fill in the name of your mayor or your county and your county commissioners. And we would really like to support you in that. So if you do have any questions, please let me know. And these are a couple of pictures. Um, the one is of the proclamation signing last year with the governor and then the Kansas Children Cabinet and Trust Fund did a proclamation as well at their April meeting. And then we had some new proclamations last year, Liberal, Seward County, they do, um, they did their meeting together. And so we had some community council or um, community leaders that went out and did that proclamation for us. We do have an office in Liberal, it's our Head Start office, but these are some of the, our volunteers in that community. So if you work in the, with an agency that utilizes volunteers, sometimes to get involved in Child Abuse Prevention Month on the family level might be a little bit intimidating for them, but they're happy to go and do some kind of a proclamation. Especially if they're business owners, they like people to know what they support in the community and what is important to them. So this is a great opportunity to utilize some of your volunteers as well. Um, a few more pictures from last year. Uh, this was the Starbucks on the Wichita State campus, which was brand new last year. We did a proclamation signing with the Wichita State President's Office at the Child Development Center that's on their campus, and we planted some pinwheels there. So we kind of looked for some different avenues of ways to get people involved and to get different partners involved. We have a fairly good partnership with the Wichita State Department for Sport Management, which is in their College of Education. So we do some other events with them throughout the year and training for those students. And so then Child Abuse Prevention Month seemed like a natural jump to include um, Wichita State in. And the president's office was very, very interested and excited to do this. So if you live in a community where there's a college, a community college, a university, I would encourage you to reach out to them, especially if they have any type of an education program, if they're training teachers, early childhood educators, social workers, these types of things are important to them and they're important opportunities for their students. So I would really encourage you to reach out to um, those groups as well. And then Avondale East, I think that's in Topeka, I can't remember, um, but I just thought I liked the background and with the pinwheels in the garden. This is just a picture of what's on the bookmark that we have. We do have these in Spanish as well as in English, so you can order either one or both of those. Like I said, it does talk about the protective factors. They're easy to give out to people at different events because they're just, you know, they're small, they're bookmark size. We sent all of the libraries in the state of Kansas a letter that encourage them to order bookmarks and to have them out during April for Child Abuse Prevention Month to plant pinwheel gardens if they were interested. So your library in your community should have received a letter that in regards to Child Abuse Prevention Month. So if you're looking for a partnership, you might go to the li to the, your library and say, you know, we know that you got this information and we're trying to promote Child Abuse Prevention Month as well and can we work together. Um, it would make a great opportunity for at a story time to be able to read something about, you know, strong families, um, read a good kids book about families, or uh, the kissing hand for me always comes to mind. And then to do like, you could print out the pinwheel coloring sheets, and they could color if they if somebody chose to buy some pinwheels, you could plant a pinwheel garden at the library. Lots of good partnerships that can happen. Libraries are a great resource for our families. I know that we refer a lot of our families to library programs because they're free and because it provides, you know, it's education 
and it just there's something about the library that just appeals to once you start going there it becomes a habit so I would really um, encourage you to do some work with your libraries as well our community resource library handles all of our orders so you can go you can order that we have a variety of tip cards some in English all in English some in Spanish if we don't have them in print anymore then you can print them on um, from the online version and they print nice they either print a full page or a half page but they're set up to print very nice on a page if you are going to buy materials from us if you can if you can make a note that the money is for cap materials that helps our accounting department a lot out quite a bit and if you can allow for two weeks if possible that is really helpful we're not super busy yet but we're getting there and so we try to get out as much as we can every day with the orders that we receive but as we get a little bit closer to april we'll get busier so if you can allow for time that is really great kim osborne is our coordinator for the community resource library and um, you can call her that's her extension 1348 you can email the community resource library we check that box daily or you can also email Kim I think her email is farther down in my PowerPoint some of the upcoming events that I know about where blue day across the nation is April 6th and that is just a day that prevent child abuse America sets for all the chapters across the nation to wear blue blue has always been the signature color of the cap campaign we think of um, blue skies I always try to say that in Kansas people tell you that you know the the sky is amazing and it's amazing shades of blue and it goes on forever and what we want when we wear blue on April 6th is to remember that kids and families are amazing and we want to to give them the opportunities that are as endless as that Kansas blue sky. So think about something fun for wear blue day. The past couple of years in the Wichita office, we have done a blue dessert contest. So blue dessert is interesting. Um, we it's it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great thing for our office staff to come together and do. We try to find some celebrity judges. Um, People actually really want to eat blue dessert, so that's usually not a problem finding a judge or two or three. So I would encourage you to be creative with either on the sixth with your wear blue or even any time during the month. We're not going to do ours on that Friday this year. We're going to do it a little bit later in the month, but it's a continual April thing about blue and child abuse prevention. We have Family Fun Day at the Cedric County Zoo, which is Saturday, April 7th. And that day, if you pre-register, the zoo will allow you um, a reduced admission. The reduced admission is $7.50, and I think normal zoo admission is right around $18 for an adult. So it's $7.50, whether you're an adult or a child, and two and under is always free at the zoo. That information will be coming out um, probably tomorrow. I don't know that there are many people on that email list outside of Cedric County. If you are outside of Cedric County and you're interested, because you can live anywhere and, and get to do this, let me know and I will make sure to get you the pre-registration information. You do have to pre-register, but you don't have to prepay. So when in doubt, it's best to pre-register because if you show up and you haven't pre-registered, they won't give you the discounted price. And like I said, if you live outside Cedric County and you would like that information, I will be happy to send it to you and you can bring families or staff or whatever. It, it's open to really anybody who pre-registers. If you haven't been to the Cedric County Zoo, it's a pretty impressive zoo. We have a brand new elephant yard. It's been open for about a year. We have a great gorilla exhibit and we have some penguins. So it has really grown a lot in the 12 years that I've lived in Wichita. Also, I know that there's a drug endangered children training in Shawnee County. It's on April 26th. 
I don't have a lot more information on that, but if you are interested in it, if you email me as I get more information, I will be glad to send that out to you. I know that the Department for Children and Families is planning some different events for April. They are working on an event at the Capitol that will include the governor and the attorney general and Secretary Meyer Hummel, among other people. And I know that they're working to coordinate calendars right now. So when those dates become available, we will for sure let you know on those as well. And as your events become, the dates become available, if you could let me know, that would be great. Um, the earlier, the better. We do like to keep a list on our website. We don't, we don't get our, our website updated more than weekly. So I try, if you have an event that's happening on a Saturday, I, if you can have it to me the week before, then I, or or even sooner than that, um, then I can get it on the website. But I can't, um, I can't just do it like the day of. I don't have that quick of a turnaround, unfortunately. So the the sooner you let me know about the dates for your events, um, then I can get them up. If it's an event that's not open to a to the public, but you're doing it for your specific families. I still like to know just from um, the report that I write at the end of the year. I write a report that goes to DCF, to the Department for Children and Families, and to the Kansas Children's Cabinet and Trust Fund, as well as to Prevent Child Abuse America. And the first two pass those on to their federal partners who like to know what's going on in a state and they like it all in one report. They don't want a report from a multitude of, of people. They want one report that says, in this county, this group did this. So we really strive to include as much as we can so our partners are looking good to their legislators and to the people at the federal level, as well as the state level that make different decisions. So the more information you can get me, the better. And pictures, again, like I said, pictures are probably the best way to really tell the story. So here's some pictures from Wear Blue Day last year, uh, the Cloud County Health Department and Caps out of Salina. Some, I don't know if that's a therapy dog or just an office dog that was wearing blue, but I thought he was cute. These are um, some pictures from Family Fun Day at the Sedgwick County Zoo last year. Our local Bikers Against Child Abuse group always comes. They do face painting and they display their bikes. So if you're in a community where there's a bikers group, um, lots of times they like to be involved in your events. They'll come out, they'll you know bring their bikes and display them and people want to talk to them especially sometimes if you have dads that don't really know how else to get involved. This is kind of something that for whatever reason, they are you know, excited to talk to the Baca group or the Guardians of Children's group, um, whatever it may be. And it's kind of fun to see all the motorcycles on display. Riley, raising Riley and child care licensing now to rally yeah, out of Riley County. Um, those must be their Wear Blue Day pictures. And they have pinwheels on their shirts. One of them does anyway. And then the Kappa Delta Deltas at KU uh, planted some pinwheels on campus and I think also in the um, yard of their house. Our social media hashtag this year will be Great Childhoods. This is the national hashtag from Prevent Child Abuse America. So we will have a conversation on social media about what makes a great childhood using that hashtag. Um, so for example, a good thing for me would be on Wear Blue Day, we will probably say, you know, great childhoods begin with a family trip to the zoo, or not on Wear Blue Day, on um, the day of our zoo event. Great childhoods begin with a family trip to the zoo. Um, you know, Wear Blue, for great childhoods, things that, that make up a great childhood. Using the hashtag 
and because then we can you can search by hashtags and hopefully it will trend if all of the chapters across the nation do it. Uh, again, Wear Blue Day is April 6th. And we do have some different social media um, posts and information in our toolkit as well. We have an office, we have a Healthy Families um, office in Emporia, and they do a great job at taking advantage of events that are already happening to get the word out. So they don't necessarily reinvent the wheel. They take a part in a lot of community events and inform people about Child Abuse Prevention Month. They do a teddy bear clinic, and then they had a car seat check somewhere in Emporia last year in April, and so they had the pinwheel and probably gave out bookmarks and whatnot. So if you have events that are already occurring in your community that you can piggyback on so you're not having to come up with something on your own, that is a great opportunity for you. Let us know that you, you know, you joined the teddy bear clinic from, you know, whatever county and then whoever your partners are that you collaborated with or who planned it invited you to join. Douglas County always does an event on Earth Day. We have a parade and the, I think it's, I don't remember who exactly, um, it's their, well, it's their Child Abuse Prevention Task Force that marches in the parade and then they have a booth in the park as well. So those are good things to be a part of. Again, I would encourage you if your community does anything like that. And if they do it, but it's not in April, still be a part of it if you can. Still promote that child abuse prevention message. Still let people know what you're doing. So we're spreading that message um, around year round. The past few years, Sporting KC has also done a wear blue game. Um, blue is their color, and so it's a natural fit. One of our staff members in our Kansas City office is a huge soccer fan, so she has always taken this on. Um, last year, I think we had both the men's and the women's team that participated in the wear blue um, for child abuse prevention. So that's been lots of fun. When you do an activity or are involved in an activity, I don't necessarily need you to fill out a form, but this gives you a good idea of what I need, the information that I need in order to report on it, um, report on the activity accurately. Um, so we just need the name of the activity, the city and the county, any partners you might have, um, the date and the time, the number you anticipate. And sometimes, like, if it's a parade, you don't really know um, how many people there are going to be, so you can just write down, it was a parade or, you know, that sort of thing. And then just a brief description and whether or not it's open to the public if you're sending it in advance. Because if you're sending it in advance and it's not something that's open to the public, then I don't want to stick it on our website because I don't want you to have people show up that, you have no idea we're going to be there. Um, a few other things that have happened in um, during Child Abuse Prevention Month. If you're familiar with Wichita at all, um, where Meridian and McLean meet, there's tower lights. And so we got the city to turn them. They usually change colors. They're, they're red and they're blue and they're purple. And so we got the city to set them all to blue for April for Child Abuse Prevention Month. And they're going to do that again this year. And I think we're going to have the opportunity to plant some pinwheels at some place over there. So to give a little more meaning even behind the lights. <clears throat> and then Bradley Fair, which is on the east side of Wichita, Junior League kind of took it over one weekend and planted pinwheels. They had the big um, lamps. Uh, lamp post signs up that talked about blue for child abuse uh, um, prevention, child abuse awareness, and then 
one year they turned that fountain blue. They didn't do that last year. So that was kind of fun as well. <coughs> so if you have the opportunity, we had a, a, a board member who was in the Kansas City area at one point and they had a big fountain um, on their property. So they turned their fountain blue. So if you have the opportunity to do that, please make sure you get pictures. They are kind of cool looking. Um, I think it was, there was a little red tape involved, but if you do have the opportunity to do it, then we would really love to see your pictures. There's some additional resources available. If you go to childwelfare.gov, they will have their resource manual out. I have ordered some of these as well, and I'm happy to share them. They're free. Um, I'm happy to share them with you. It's also available as a download. All the information that's in these books is um, public domain. So lots of times there's good information, good tip sheets for parents and things like that. And again, I have ordered some, they haven't arrived yet, but if you are interested, just shoot me an email and I will be, had, be happy to drop one in the mail to you. And then my email and my phone number are there. And that kind of wraps it up. We always say that we're putting a new spin on prevention. Just as a reminder that April, we really want to talk about prevention and prevention programs. We want to give the public an idea of things that they can do. That kind of goes back to the protective factors. Lots of times people will say, when they ask me, you know, what, what do you do? What's your job? And I explain to them that I work in child abuse prevention. And, they people will say i just don't even know what to do i don't know anything that i could do that would help prevent child abuse and so sometimes it's just that reminder that you know one of those protective factors is nurturing and sometimes we have to nurture our new parents so they can nurture their babies sometimes we just have to remember that when we're in a grocery store and there's parents and their kids are having meltdowns that you know to pat them on the back, to remind them that this too shall pass, to stand in solidarity with them as their two-year-old is having a complete meltdown in the soup aisle at the grocery store, or whatever it takes. We need to remind people that, you know, it's, we're not judging them. We've been there. If you've, had, if you've had children, you know you've been there. You've had that two-year-old that melts down or that teenager that rolls their eyes at you um, over something that should be logical but in their mind is ridiculous. So we, you know, those are some really easy things to remind parents to do. A few years ago out in Western Kansas, one of the young women there did like stickers at the grocery store that as parents were um, struggling through situations, they, you know, if you were out and about and you caught them, kind of a catch them being good type of thing, you, gave them a sticker, congratulated them on surviving whatever was happening that day, or just on, you know, complimenting their children. Your children are riding so nice in the grocery cart, those types of things. Because sometimes I think we forget that we all need that affirmation, and that is hugely important, especially when you're a new parent. So those protective factors, keep pushing those. Don't be afraid to tell people what you do and what your programs do and the benefits that they have, because I think that education is hugely important. And then the last slide is just gives you our social media where you can find us on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. So follow us on Twitter so we can retweet you, like what you like, um, we can all be involved in that great childhoods social media campaign. And that is really all I have today.